The Cube presents HPE Discover 2022. Brought to you by HPE. Okay, we're back at HPE Discover 2022. This is day three, we're kind of in the midpoint of day three. John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage, I think this is our 14th HP slash HPE Discover. We've sort of documented the history of the company over the last decade plus. Anant Adya is here, he's executive vice president at Infosys, and Saju Sankaran Kudi is the CTO and vice president of Infosys. Infosys doing some amazing work in the field with clients. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the you. opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So, digital transformation, it's all the buzzword, kind of pre-pandemic, it was sort of, yeah, you know, we'll get there, a lot of lip service to it. Some, some started on the journey, and then of course, pandemic, yeah. if you weren't digital business, you were out of business. What are the trends that you're seeing now that we're exiting the isolation economy? Yeah, as you, um, again, um, as you rightly called out, uh, pre-pandemic, it was all about using sort of, you know, innovation at scale as one of the levers for digital transformation. Uh, but uh, if you look at now, post-pandemic, one of the things that we see, it's a big trend, is at a, at a broad level, right, digital transformation is not about cost takeout. Uh, it's all about growth, right? So essentially, uh, like uh, what we hear from most of the CEOs and most of the customers and most of the executives in the tech company, uh, digital transformation uh, should be used for business growth. And essentially it means uh, three things, right, that we see, three trends in that space. One is uh, how can you build better products and solutions uh, as part of your transformation strategy? Uh, how can you basically use digital transformation to expand into new markets and new, new territories and new regions? And the third is how can you better the experience for your customers, right? So I think that is broadly what we see as uh, some of the things. And essentially, if you have better customer experience, they will buy more. Uh, if you expand into new markets, your revenue will increase. If you actually build better products and solutions, consumers will buy it, right? So it's basically like a sort of an economy that goes uh, hand in hand. Uh, so I would say uh, the trend is clearly going towards business growth uh, than anything else when it comes to digital transformation. You know, I'll follow up on that. We had IDC on yesterday yeah, and they were sharing that. us some of their high level numbers. Yeah. I mean, we've looked at this and, and, and it seems like IT spending is pretty consistent yes. despite the fact that for example, you know, B2C, the consumer business is sort of tanking right now. Right. Are you seeing any pullback or any evidence that people are pulling the reins back on their digital transformation? Or are they just going because if they don't keep, keep moving fast, they're going to fall behind? What are you seeing there? Oh, absolutely. In fact, you know, what we call them as uh, the secular headwinds, right? I mean, if you look at the headwinds here, uh, we see digital transformation is in the minds of everybody, every customer, right? Mm -hmm. So while there are budget constraints, where are all these macro tailwinds, as we call, with respect to inflation, with respect to what's happening with Russia and Ukraine, uh, with respect to everything that's happening with respect to supply chain, right? I think we see some of those uh, tailwind, uh, headwinds, but essentially digital transformation is not stopping. Everybody is going after that because essentially they want to be relevant in the market, and if they want to be relevant in the market, they have to transform. And yeah. if they have to transform, they have to adopt digital transformation. It's basically, there's no hiding anymore. You no hiding anymore. You can't Absolutely. hide the projects and kind of give lip service. Totally. Because the, there's evidence yes. of, of what the consequences are. Totally. And it can be quantified. Yes. I mean, you go out of business, you lose money. You mentioned some of the, the, the I won't say cost takeouts, the growth issues. Yes. So I got, but given, given the trends and the headwinds and the tailwinds, what are you guys seeing as the pattern of companies that came out of the pandemic with growth and what's going on with that growth driver? What are the elements that are powering companies to grow? Is it machine learning? Is it cloud scale? Is it integration? What are some of the key areas that's given that extra up and to the right? Yeah, so I, I would say there are six technologies that are defining uh, how growth is being enabled, right? So I think we call it as cloud, AI, edge, 5G, IoT, and of course, uh, everything to do with uh, AI and ML, right? So these are the six technologies that are powering digital transformation. And uh, one of the things that we are seeing is more and more customers are now coming and saying that we want to use these six technologies to drive business outcomes. Uh, for example, uh, we have a, a very large uh, oil and gas customer of ours uh, who says that you know we want to basically use cloud as a lever to drive decarbonization. Uh, ESG is such a big initiative for everybody and ESG is in the minds of everybody. So their outcome of using technology is to drive decarbonation and you know, make sure that you know, they 
achieve the goals of ESG, right? Uh, there is another customer of ours in the retail space. They are saying we want to use cloud to drive experience for our employees. So I would say that you know there is uh, pretty much you know all these drivers which are helping not just uh, growing their business but also bettering the experience and meeting some of the organization goals that they have set up with respect to cloud. So I would say cloud is playing a big role in every digital transformation initiative of the company. Saju, how do you spend your time? What's the role of a CTO inside of a large organization like Infosys? So, um, one is in terms of uh, bringing in an outside in view of how technology is making an impact to our customers. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at um, how do we actually start leveraging some of these technologies in building solutions, you know, which can actually drive value for our customers. That's one of the focus areas, you know, what I do. Um, and if you look at some of the trends, you know, what we have seen um, in the past years, as well as what we are seeing now, uh, there's been a huge spend around cloud, which is happening with our customers. And uh, predominantly around the cloud native application development, leveraging some of the services, what's available from the cloud providers like AI, uh, ML, uh, you know, IoT. Um, and, and there's also a new trend, you know, what we are seeing off late now, which is um, in terms of improving the experience, overall experience, leveraging some of the technologies like I technologies like blockchain as well as AR, VR, right? And, and this is actually creating new set of solutions, yep. um, new demands you know, for our customers uh, in terms of leveraging technologies like Metaverse, uh, leveraging technologies like Factory Photo, um, and, and these are all opportunities for us to build solutions you know, which can um, you know, improve the time to market for our customers in terms of adopting some of these things because there has been a huge focus on the improved end user experience or improved experience, improved um, uh, you know, productivity of uh, employees, you know, which, is, which has been a focus uh, post-pandemic, right? You know, it has been something which is happening pre-pandemic but it's been accelerated post-pandemic. So this is giving an opportunity um, for, for, for my role, right? You know, in terms of leveraging these technologies, building solutions, building value propositions, taking it to our customers, uh, working with partners, and then trying to see how we can have this tightly integrated with partners like HPE in this yeah. case, and then take it jointly to the market and, and find out you know, what's, what's the best we can actually give back to our customers. You know, you guys have been, we've been following you guys for, for a long, long time. You've seen many cycles uh, in the industry. Um, and what's interesting, I want to get your reaction to what we're seeing in a lot of acceleration points, whether it's cloud native applications, but one is, the software business is no longer there. It's open source now. Yeah. But cloud scale, integrations, new hybrid environment kind of brings and changes the game. So there's definitely software, plentiful. You guys are, I know, doing a lot of stuff with the software. How are customers integrating? Because you're seeing more and more customers participating in the open source community. Um, yeah. You saw what Red Hat's done, they're, they're transforming, like OpenShift. So as cloud native applications come in, you get scale and so open source software, Cloud scale performance and integrations are big. Do you guys agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. So if you, if you look at it um, right from the way we conceptualize our solutions, um, open source is something what we have embedded a big way, right, into the solution footprint what we have. Uh, one is uh, the ability for us to scale. The second is the ability for us to bring in a level of portability, right? And uh, the third is uh, ensuring that there is absolutely no lock-in into something what we are building. We are, we are seeing this, this is being resonated by our customers too, uh, because one is they want to build um, agile and scalable applications. Uh, it's something where the, the whole, um, I would say the, the whole dependency on the large software stacks, uh, you know, the, the large software providers is slightly diminishing now, right? Uh, it's all about uh, how, to, how can I simplify my application portfolio leveraging some of the open source technologies? Um, how can I deploy them on a multi-cloud world yes. leveraging open standards so that I'm not logged into any of these providers? Um, how can I build cloud native applications which can actually enable portability? And how can I work with providers um, who doesn't have a lock-in you know, into their solutions. And security's got to be it's embedded in everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, so security is uh, embedded right from, uh, you know, uh, the design phase, right? You know, we call it a secure by design. And that's something what we drive for our customers, right, from our solutions as well as 
for developing their own solutions. As opposed to secure by bolt-on after the fact. Yes, um, absolutely. What is the cobalt go-to-market strategy? How does that affect you or, or imply how you do business? within the HPE ecosystem. Talk about sure. that. Sure, absolutely. I think you know what we did in, uh, in 2020, uh, we were the first ones uh, to come out with an integrated cloud brand called Cobalt. So essentially our thought process was to make sure that you know, we talk one consistent uh, language with the customer, and there is a consistent narrative, there is a consistent value proposition that we take, right? So uh, essentially if you look at the Cobalt go-to-market, uh, it is based on three pillars. So the first pillar is all about technology solutions. Getting out of data centers, migrating workloads to cloud, ERP on cloud, cloud native development, legacy modernization. So we'll continue to do that because that's the most important pillar and that's where our bread and butter business is, right? The second pillar is uh, more and more customers are asking industry cloud. So what are you specifically doing for my industry? So for example, if you look at uh, banking, uh, they would say we are focused on modernizing our payment systems. We want to reduce the financial risk that we have because of anti-money laundering and those kind of uh, solutions that they're expecting. They want to better the security posture and of course they want to improve the experience, right? So they are asking for each of these imperatives that we have in banking, what are some of those specific industry solutions that we you are bringing to the table, right? So that's the second pillar of our Cobalt go-to-market. And a third pillar of our go-to-market, as Saju was saying, is looking at what we call as Horizon 3 offerings, whether it is Metaverse, whether it is Web 3.0, whether it is looking at something else that will come in the future, and how do we build those solutions which can become mainstream in the next 18 to 24 months. So, so that's essentially the go-to-market. So that's interesting. So, okay, so take that banking example where you've got a core app, it's, it's probably on-prem, and it's, it's not, you're not going to necessarily shove that into the cloud necessarily but they have to do things like anti-money laundering and know yep. your KYC. Yes. How are they handling that? Are they building microservices or are you building for them microservices layers around that that actually might be in the cloud or cloud native on-prem and green layer? How is that, how are customers modernizing? Absolutely, a brilliant question. In fact, what we have done is, uh, uh, as part of Cobalt, we have something called a reference architecture or it's basically a blueprint. So if you go to a bank and uh, you are eng engaging a banking executive, uh, the language the, that we speak with them is not about uh, private cloud or public cloud or AWS or HP or Azure, right? I mean, we talk the language that they understand, which is the banking language. So we take this reference architecture and we say, here is what your core architecture should look like. And as you rightly called out, there is KYC, there is retail banking, there is uh, anti-money laundering, there is security experience. Uh, there are some APIs and those kind of things, banking APIs or open banking as we call. Uh, how do we actually bring our solutions, which we have built on open source and something that are specific to cloud and something that are cloud neutral, and that's what we take them. So we have built this array of solutions around each of those reference architectures that we take to our customers. Final question for you guys, how are you guys leveraging HPE and New Green Lake and all the new stuff they got here to accelerate the customer's journey to edge to cloud? Awesome. So, um, I would say around three areas, right? No, this is, uh, one is obviously we are working very closely with HP in terms of uh, taking our solutions jointly to the market and um, leveraging the, the whole GreenLake model and providing what I call it as a hyperscaler-like experience for our customers in a, in a hybrid multi-cloud world. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, Anand talked about the Cobalt, right? You know, it's, um, it's, a, it's an important, um, I would say an offering from, uh, uh, you know, an offering around cloud from our side. So what we have done is we have closely integrated the assets, you know, what Anand was referring to, what we have in our Cobalt, um, you know, under, under our Cobalt umbrella, uh, very closely with the HP ecosystem, right? You know, it can be tools like the Infosys PolyCloud platform or the Infosys PolyNet platform, very tightly integrated with the HP stack so that we could actually offer the value proposition right across the value chain. The third is, you know, we have actually taken the industry pivot, like what Anant again mentioned, right, in terms of rather than talking about a public cloud or a private cloud solution or an edge computing solution, we actually talk about what exactly are the problem statements, what is there in manufacturing today, or it's there in financial industries today, or, or it's in a bank today, or whatever it's relevant to the industry. That's an industry pivot. So we talk right from an industry problem and, 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 and build that industry, industry pivot solutions leveraging the assets what we have and the, and the framework what we have within the Cobalt 
plus the integrated solutions what we bring along with HPE. That's, that's, those are the three things what we do along with HPE. Yeah, and that, that industry piece is it's new. Huge. There's a whole data layer emerging. Yes. Those industries, uh, learning. companies, they're building their own clouds, yes. and work, look, working with companies like you, because they want to monetize. That's a big part of their digital strategy. Guys, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank really you. appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you for that. All right, and thank you for watching. John and I will be back. John Furrier, Dave Vellante at HPE Discover 2022. You're watching theCUBE.